See, yeah. now let's find out what's in for the mother of the bride or the groom. It's an important decision. So many things to take into consideration. It can almost be as tough as picking out the wedding gown. Joining us with her recommendations is personal stylist Karen Harima. And Karen, you brought this beautiful it's blue gorgeous. dress in. Yes. Is that a trending color style or what did you want to tell us about that? Well, Actually, I wanted to bring that because sleeves are making a comeback and so many women are self-conscious about their arms that day and it's just, it can be stressful. Like you said, shopping can be stressful for the mother of the bride or groom. And so the sleeves are coming back, a sheer sleeve, which you'll see kind of shorter or even going into elbow or three quarter. So in, you mean instead of like a, a tank top style or instead like the cutoff? Yes. What about length, short, long? I see this is kind of in the middle. And this one has what's um, kind of an illusion hem so you see the um, lining is comes just above the knee and the hemline is actually just below. But as far as length goes, the, the bride really sets the tone for mm -hmm. the formality of it. The venue is a consideration. Many brides now are um, going away from the traditional church wedding and choosing a venue where there's a ceremony and the reception all in one place, like right. in wineries and right. where, where we live. So as far as short or long, so Traditionally, and again, those are just guidelines. It's not all about rules. Um, day weddings, lighter colors, and cocktail length. And then evening weddings, you can do floor length, or um, even you can do shorter as well. Maybe darker colors, you can do a little bit like more. Like you said, clits. the bride yeah. will kind of set the stage. Yeah, yeah and yeah. certainly you want to coordinate uh, with, if you're the mother of the bride, with the mother of the groom, so that you have the same length, correct? Yes, um, again, I hear so many brides say, oh my goodness, I just want you to look and feel good that mm -hmm. day. And so their guidelines and I think there's so many of those traditional rules that are still good to follow, but at the same time, um, be because, yourself. Yeah, because exactly. nothing is worse than if you know you don't like your arms in a photo and then you wear a sleeveless dress and you get your photos, you're not going to like them. Right. So just be comfortable, <laughs> wear what yeah, you know right. is going to look good. Yeah, that's such a good point. I always talk about photos too, because um, let's say you're trying to decide what color mm -hmm. and um, try to duplicate where the wedding is going to be, even if you're in your backyard, if it's going to be an outdoor wedding. No selfies in the bathroom, <laughs> or the bathroom <laughs> to get the, the lighting, but um, that really gives you an idea how the yeah. color of the dress is going to photograph. Exactly. And that makes a big difference. Let's talk accessories. Mm -hmm. You brought some beautiful options here. So one thing again is the block heel on a shoe is so nice because um, Turn that if you so are, see that. that's really nice. <laughs> if you are going to be at a winery and outdoor in the grass, gravel, <laughs> it's a little bit nicer to wear a block heel. But typically um, for summer, you want a nude, like a nice that, strappy, exactly, it's and it just you want it to disappear into your leg. Now there's some black dresses that, and by the way, black still is you can you can wear black. It's okay for a mother of the bride or groom, but sometimes with a black dress, I'll say a black shoe is a little bit better. It just kind of depends. You just don't want it to look heavy and call attention to your foot. You know what I was gonna? I was just gonna interrupt, Karen. I found mm -hmm. a couple of years ago they make these little um, heel that you stick it under your heel. They're they're clear uh -huh. and you can walk in grass. And yes. They're like ten bucks, oh. yes. so they're like a little square thing, so you won't get wedged down in. Great so, tip. Cool tip. <laughs> as far as accessories, do you want to minimize? You know, it's so much about personal style and the dress. So in that case, I put a, just a little simple necklace on that dress. But if you wanted to do a bracelet, um, if you've got a lot going on with the top of the dress, then just skip the necklace and do earrings instead or a bracelet. So you try to find your focal point for the accessory too. And just a general rule of thumb, if you are in flux with your weight, maybe trying to lose weight a little bit, do you still recommend going up in sizes for tailoring purposes? Yes. What's that kind of that goal? Yeah. Rule. So, you know, if you want to buy two sizes, if your budget allows that, buy two sizes if you're trying to lose weight. But otherwise, consult a tailor right away. If you have found the dress, mm -hmm. consult her, and it's always easy to easier to go down or to tailor it in. Take it in. Yeah, take yep. it in. It's okay. way easier. Good advice. Well, I had a challenge a couple of years ago. I had to find a dress that looked good with cowboy boots <laughs> for a barn wedding. Oh, everything looks good married. with cowboy <laughs> boots, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Karen Harima, thank you so much. Thank yeah. you Wonderful. For me. When we